going on some amazingly big news that's happened. We had a huge announcement with OpenAI yesterday as of the time of recording. And today I am gonna to share with you what I see 99% of people missing. And the reason why I'm sharing this with you is because I actually conduct AI skill transformation training. I've done it for hundreds of executives over the last two to three months. And on top of it too, I spent four hours in the new ChatGPT 4.0, that's the Omni model version, right? And really tested it because I wanted to give you something tangible. I didn't want to just give you a breaking news update, right? I wanted to give you something so that you could actually see what are some hidden use cases that nobody's talking about. And here's the beautiful thing about it. I am not going to share with you crap that is not released yet, okay? I'm not going to share with you vaporware or look at this. There are some really exciting things that are coming out. But I wanted to give you something that's actually in production today with real tangible use cases so that you can go into the tool, start using it. And the weirdest thing is I am shocked that nobody from OpenAI is talking about some of these capabilities because in my, like I should say, in my opinion, when it comes to the business side of the house, these are absolute game changers, okay? So I'm gonna walk you through this and I'm gonna share my screen with you. I have a few examples that I'm gonna walk through, two that I built out already and one we're gonna do in real time. And I think this will be super critical for you. So let me share my screen with you and you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna start very, very simple and it's almost comedic, the first example I'm gonna give you. And reason being is because I'm actually gonna use something that I was kind of joking around. Okay, so I'm sure you could see my screen. We're gonna start here. Now, what I did is I went in the tool Perplexity AI. I didn't use OpenAI for this one, but you'll see what I did. And I gave it a prompt, okay? I asked it to act like a research assistant, specialize in it, right? Giving certain topic capabilities. And one of the things that I did in there is basically gave it that, that example. And I asked for the topic to be specifically around the new release for ChatGPT, okay? So I wanted it to act like that. And so what you're gonna see here is the beautiful thing is it gives a summary of the whole launch. Okay, so this is a great tool if you wanna understand what these launches are doing. Perplexity goes through, it gave the key dimensions, the major themes, controversies, evolutions, advancements, implications, implications, right? So the beautiful thing about this is I then copied the output of this solution right here. I just took it and went boom, right? Let me go down. So I copied that and then went through there and, and basically took advantage of that, okay? So I copied it. Then all I said was I said, hey, I said, can you, with a typo, can you, you, right? Because I, I fat finger stuff all the time, man. I kind of suck it. it. Can you create a PowerPoint presentation with the following content? And all I did was paste that, all right? So this is the cool thing nobody's talking about. All right, boom. So this is what happened. It created a PowerPoint presentation from the information I gave it, okay? So let's look at this. Now we go in here. Let's pop it up. Actually, just I pulled it up prior to. So here's the presentation. Let's see. Okay, so this is what pulls up. You're probably like, all right, Ryan, this is nothing sexy, right? Here's the hidden gem. You want to rapidly create documents or information. Okay. Now I do have Copilot, but I'm not going to enable Copilot in here because I'm a nut. I test all these freaking tools, right? Um, and use them for my clients. However, this is the game changer. You see this little designer icon over here? You click on that, and what you're gonna see is it gives you different visuals that you could leverage, and so you don't have to spend tons of time. And I was, I was like so excited when I saw this because I hate doing PowerPoint presentations, right? So if I wanna click on this, it puts it, it formats at the right. If I wanted to do this version, I could do it there, right? Okay, so let's keep, keep this, and as you see, you could go through the whole presentation and boom, click on these different slides. All you just have to do is leave designer enabled. And now granted, there's some minor formatting that you're gonna need to do, but this is why I was like super stoked because it gives you all these options and visuals in terms of like, okay, what are the controversies, right? And you're gonna obviously wanna edit this, but this was even built for a presentation. All I did was build this out with a contact, or I should say content, uh, capability to map this out and show you. And then now what you're going to see is literally in minutes, I went through here and effectively I created a six point PowerPoint presentation from content in chat GPT. And I didn't do any special linking or other things. Obviously I have Microsoft office, but basically I created a pretty sweet looking presentation just on a summary that I took from perplexity AI to create this like, within a few minutes, 
Like, so this was one of the things, like I said, nobody's talking about this. They're talking about a voice assistant that 99.9% .9 of people don't have access to yet, which is amazing, right? It's real time emotional detection. Love it. This is stuff that, that pays the bacon right now. Okay. So this is one of the examples I'm going to show you. Now, let me walk on the other one. The other thing that I don't see a lot of folks talking about is really the quality. And, you know, I know Sam Altman kind of hinted at it, like that it's much better. Quality is hard to map. So it's not going to be like, there's not going to be tons of headlines on it. So all I did is I said, okay, act like a director of sales with 30 years of experience. I have five direct reports and an overall budget of 5 million I need to hit. You need to identify OKRs I can assign to them. So OKRs are objective keys and results, right? Uh, that I, like folks use in the executive realm to really identify and map what different individuals are responsible for, how they're evaluated. So it's basically like the love language of executives when you go into corporate America. Now, one of the beautiful things that I said, OpenAI did is they did a really good job of amping up the quality of this. And so as you can see here, this is one of the things, basically it maps out the five different OKRs, which is, or I should say six, and then it's basically talks about how to assign those to direct. Okay. And if you're not a business executive, that's okay. I'm just giving you ideas on how you could take a framework and basically attach that framework, ask ChatGPT to do something with experience. And then it creates close to 95% of the work done for you, of course. So this is very deep strategic thinking in terms of what it's doing. And this is something that takes a really long time for business executives to do. Okay. And so what it does is it maps that out. And I said, okay, can you create a visual org chart demonstrating? So this is where it didn't do a good job. It, it put it in code, which I was like, okay, this is good. Then I use it. I asked it to use the at whimsical, basically GPT, right? So I made the mistake because if you haven't heard of whimsical, it's a GPT that's free. But one of the cool things is like, if you want a GPT to work properly, you have to like have looked at it recently. And then if you do look at it recently, like it says, see how it says there search recent. So this is one. So then I could do basically have it integrated with whimsical right there as the GPT that's used. And then that's how I created this visual right here. So that's the mistake I made. But as you can see, it then created a visual of these OKRs or how this team is evaluated in a very simple mind map format. Now I try to also have that exported to PowerPoint. It did run into some issues. However, what I was able to do is get this and then you can just copy this image and then paste it into PowerPoint. Okay. So once again, we went from all the way from high level result that we want. And then basically ChatGPT did all the heavy lifting 4.0. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you kind of the third element, right? So we got PowerPoint creation and, and basically how to rapidly scale and create presentations. We're talking about the quality and the strategic element. I'm going to start to bring in data and how fast it works. And this is something that I was blown away with because I've tested this before. I'm going to do this blank in real time so you can see what happens. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to work this here and I am going to pull up on my main screen that I'm looking at at you about how to leverage data in here. Okay. And we're going to go from data to multiple examples. Now, all I'm saying is I want you to perform an analysis on this data that I'm about to drop in here. Basically, this is a test file that I, I use it has potential customer data, not potential, but like sample customer data that you could look at. All right. Now watch this. I'm going to click this and you're going to see how fast this works in real time. It's analyzing it. And basically, I'm having it uncover insights on an ideal customer profile, Okay, which is really, really eye opening. And one of these things I've done other videos on this before, but it goes through this really quick and you don't have to give it a lot of data. Look how fast that's going. That's insane, right? And now it's still continuing. I didn't even have to prompt it. All right. So now it's going to go through and you're going to see how this kind of maps out. Okay. So it's identifying errors. Like, okay, some of the columns aren't, aren't nailed and look how fast, like this would time out. It would error. So this is recovering the speed, recovering everything. So now it's recalculating the columns. Now it's going through the, the, app, the results, right? When it wasn't even perfect. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is this is asking if I want to want to create or want visualizations. Okay. So let me, let me do one more step of analysis and then you'll see what we're going to have here. So now what I'm trying to do is look at, okay, we're leveraging Pareto's principle, which if you don't know Pareto's principle, it's an amazing concept where 
20% of your results create 80% or as to say 20% of your efforts create 80% of your results. So I use this in many parts of my life, whether it be um, managing time, whether it be where to focus. Uh, I use it in my business. I've used it in go to market teams. It actually has done amazing work for us um, when I leverage it specifically with who we are focusing on. Okay. So once again, identifying that there's some, some data missing, but here's the cool part. Now it's mapping out and identifying that the top 10% did this much revenue, the top 20% contributed 94% of revenue. I'm like, okay, now please create visuals and graphs and charts provide six examples. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift gears. I'm going to have it map this out and visualize it. Now there's other ways I could do this with like better prompting, but I'm giving it to you very raw. So you could see how even a, like a, a novice user could use this and leverage this and get really, really good details. And once again, this is something, like I said, I'm doing in real time. Uh, so it's, it's creating all these different charts as you can see in real time. And so then as you can see, it gave us, look at this. <laughs> this is pretty freaking good. Okay. So now it's got different examples. Some of these are better than other, like industry distribution, country distribution, company size distribution, right? Annual contract value. So it's got a lot of different areas and some of the data isn't the best. Like, I think what you could do too, is like, give it more specific instructions and say like, okay, identify the top five industries and visualize them for me. Okay. Once again, I didn't test this or anything like that. This is something that I'm doing on the fly with you. And then I'm going to wrap it up and bring it home. You're going to see something really cool with that. Now what it's going to do is create these as well. Okay. So it's got the top five, which is great. Okay. Okay. So now here's what I love. Now turn this visual into a PowerPoint. What's up? But you'll see it's, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. You'll see. So I tried this for another example. And like I said, this just got released. So this should be good. Okay. So this is what it does. Now I created a PowerPoint slide. I click on it. It's going to download your computer. Let me open it. Boom. There you go. So that's how simple it is. Really what I've done today is I've broken into kind of down three main components. One is really effectively how amazing this is now at creating PowerPoint presentations from data or information, which was a key barrier in terms of business use case in my, my estimation. Um, another one that I think is really good is the speed in which it operates. And then you see how we go from kind of like point A to point Z all the way from, okay, analyze this data, give me insights on it, create visuals, and then put that in a PowerPoint slide. So really effectively, those are some key examples that nobody's talking about specifically for business use cases. Now I'm going to go much deeper on this. I wanted to get something out to you before, uh, it, it, it became too late. So I wanted to get something out to you within less than 24 hours of when this was released. So you had this, this capability, who knows, I'm going to go deeper in terms of my views on what this means, because there's a lot of things that are made available with this model that nobody's talking about, or they're not really understanding the implications because it just happened. So I'm going to go much deeper on that on the scale up show. In addition, I'm sure I'm going to do more videos, but wanted to get something out for you in time. So you had kind of a quick full tutorial on how you could leverage this instantly without waiting for all the new features and capabilities to come out so you can take advantage of it in real time. So once again, this is Ryan. Thanks for checking this out and I will see you on the next video.